Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. I'm Donna Welch, pastor of Spiritual Formation, and we are so glad that each and every one of you has chosen to worship with us today. Overjoyed, really, to be with you on this sacred journey through Advent. We want to make sure that you know about our annual Christmas Eve service. It is a high holy service for us, a much beloved tradition of gathering together to welcome Emmanuel, God with us, through song and scripture, love and joy. We will gather virtually at 9 p.m. where you can watch along with your family and all your closest friends, maybe some you haven't even met yet. It will premiere on our YouTube channel at 9 p.m and then be available anytime after that, as always. After worship at 10 p.m., you'll want to make it over to our Zoom reception. Everyone is welcome to join us for a short time of fellowship and fun as we wish each other well and a Merry Christmas. You can find information about both events on our, on our website at lavernecob.org. Again, we are so glad that of all the places you could be in this moment, you've chosen to worship with us. Let us continue now in a spirit of worship as we prepare our hearts for the incarnation of light and love born into a weary world. The Laverne Church of the Brethren is part of the Church of the Brethren denomination. Because we are part of something larger than ourselves, we have the ability to impact things beyond our little corner of the world. We take a special offering for our denomination a couple times a year and so that we can put our money together with the money contributed by other churches to aid our siblings in Nigeria and Spain and to ensure that ministries like Brethren Voluntary Service and the Global Food Initiative continue to thrive. If you would like to contribute to the mission of our denomination, you can do so by clicking on Denominational Offering on the PayPal tab on our website, or by sending a check to the church office. In this time, when we are physically separate from each other, we still have a chance to be a part of something larger than ourselves. Today's scripture reading is John chapter 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Oh, 
Advent candle. We light this third Advent candle to remind us that through Christ we are invited into a relationship with the Creator, where we are transformed by love into love. Hi kids, I am so glad to be with you today. Oh yeah, I'm wearing my headlamp today. Do you have one of these? It's a flashlight you wear on your head. I have it so that when I need to do something in the dark, I still have both of my hands free. I can have a flashlight and still do what I need to do. Pretty cool, huh? I'm wearing it today because I've been thinking about how important light is. Light's the main source of energy for all living things. Plants have to have light or they die. And plants create oxygen, which we absolutely have to have. Light's so important and it connects us to this great web of life. I had to tell myself that recently when I was staying in a cabin in the woods and right above my head was a skylight, which is a it's a window in the ceiling. And the moon was full when I was staying at this cabin and every night the moon would wake me up because it was just so bright. I would have to cover my head with my pillow to be able to sleep. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that the moon doesn't make its own light? No. It's merely reflecting the light of the sun and then it comes down and shines on the earth. So light is important and so is reflection. Let's go outside. I want to show you something and it requires the sun. I have a magnifying glass and a file folder. And if I hold this magnifying glass so that it reflects the light of the sun onto this file folder, do you know what will happen? I heard that. You guys are so smart. It'll burn a hole in the, in the file folder. Because when we reflect the light that comes from the sun, we can do powerful things. Jesus told us that he's the light of the world. He also told us that we are the light of the world. And that's because we have the ability to take Jesus' light and reflect it out onto others. We can take the love of Christ and share it with everyone around us. And when we do that, we reflect Jesus' love to everyone around us. Can you remember that this Christmas season? That's my prayer for us today, that we take the love that God shows us and then turn around and reflect it out to everyone around us. Amen. During this season of Advent, we're exploring the Julian of Norwich inspired body prayer. And I wanna share with you a potential daily practice that you could use that I developed with this prayer and Judy Canato's book, Radical Amazement. It starts for me outside on my morning walk, but you could just as easily find a comfortable place to sit outside or by a window inside where you can see and feel the warmth of the sun. And I know that some of you in colder climates may have to use your imagination, but that works too. I like to receive the sunshine while I'm walking and imagine it as God's radiating love. As the sun warms my face and my hands, I imagine that the light is entering my body, filling me with light and peace. And from this place of centeredness and connection, I stop and I move through the body prayer. Await, allow accept, attend. Knowing that the same sun that is shining on me in that moment shined on Jesus over 2,000 years ago helps me to engage the incarnation in tangible ways. I invite you now to imagine that light shining on you as we move through the postures and intentions for this moment. Await the light which darkness cannot overcome. Allow yourself to become a bearer of this light. Accept without false humility or fear that you are a worthy vessel. Attend to the ways that you can share your God-given light with the world. 
Let these postures and intentions be our prayer of hope and joy on this Advent day. Amen. Sierra and I'll be reading Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. My husband, Jeff, has a favorite joke. What did the snail say when he was riding on the back of a turtle? (laughs) Wee! So is this turtle slow or is it fast? The answer here is yes. In my lifetime, I have observed over and over again that two seemingly opposing things can be true at the same time. Life is multifaceted and so are human beings. Yet, we often walk around placing each other into tidy little boxes. Good, bad, right, wrong, broken, whole, wise, ignorant, brave, and scared. We lose so much of the beautiful nuance that life has to offer when we shove each other, or ourselves for that matter, into a box. No one is ever just one thing. Think of a time when you worked up the courage to do something that really intimidated or scared you. We have all had them. What was it for you? A first date? 
an important interview, treatment, retirement, regardless of the event or the outcome, in the moment you did that thing, you were both brave and scared. Life is not this or that. Life is this and that. Faith or science? The answer is yes. Black lives matter or blue lives matter? The answer is yes. Two seemingly opposing things can exist side by side rather than cancel each other out. Today you heard two scripture passages read to you. In the first, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In the second, he said, you are the light of the world. So which is true? Is Jesus the light of the world or are you? In her book, Radical Amazement, author and spiritual director Judy Canato explores the connectedness of all creation through science and faith. On the first Sunday of Advent, Pastor Tom referred to her work and talked to us about the Big Bang, when God first proclaimed, let there be light and life itself began. When Canato talks about the light of the world, she does so by likening the incarnation to photosynthesis. She proposes that the sun was always radiating light toward the earth as an offering of connection between the two. But it wasn't until a tiny cell mutated and began to capture light in a process we know as photosynthesis that the earth was able to fully receive that gift forever bonding the two in intimate relationship. Just as Canado points to photosynthesis as one of the critical moments of the Earth's evolution, she points to the incarnation as the definitive event in Christianity when divine life spilled over into human life. She writes, like the sun which pours out her own life to nourish and support life on Earth, the Holy One pours out its own life to support and nourish us. Light is a gift of creation to creation, and without it, we could not exist. Still, light was born from darkness. The two do not exist in isolation from the other. Barbara Brown Taylor has something important to say about that. Biblically speaking, she says, darkness is the pits. <laughs> In the First Testament, light stands for life and darkness for death. Shoal is dark as hell. Yeah, life feels pretty dark to some of us right now. The effects of a nearly year-long battle with COVID-19 pandemic has just about depleted our physical, emotional, and spiritual resources. We're having to make excruciating decisions about holiday gatherings and, in some cases, canceling them altogether. We miss our traditions and rituals. We miss our families and friends. This past Tuesday, I delivered one of the most painful prayer chains I have ever had to share with our congregation. We lost three saints in the course of just as many days, and it feels like we have been plunged into darkness. The year 2020 has just been a black hole. We've been pulled into situations and scenarios that are unfamiliar, uncomfortable, and ungrounding at best, or worse, into a dark night of the soul with a gravitational pull so strong it feels difficult to escape, if not impossible. Here, Barbara Brown Taylor offers a helpful reminder. Darkness does not come from a different place than light. It is not presided over by a different God. Even when light fades and darkness falls, as it does every single day in every single life, God does not turn the world over to some other deity. Darkness is not dark to God. The night is as bright as the day. Science also has something important to say on the topic through a phenomenon called Hawking's radiation, discovered by the world-renowned physicist Stephen Hawking. It has to do with quantum mechanics and 
I am way out of my wheelhouse here, but I'll give it a go. The effects of quantum fluctuations create productions of particles that really pop out of nothingness. Then almost instantaneously they partner up, annihilate, and then fail to exist. In that process, some of the particles get sucked into the black hole and the others get flung out into space. The particles that get cut loose are radiation or light that comes from the black hole. So what that means is that even in a black hole, there is a possibility of light. Even in a black hole. For those of you that feel like you have fallen into a black hole that threatens to destroy all that you have known yourself to be, there exists the possibility of light. Again, Barbara Brown Taylor from her book, Learning to Walk in the Dark. I have learned things in the dark that I could never have learned in the light, things that have saved my life over and over again. So there really is only one logical conclusion. We need darkness as much as we need light. Darkness or light? No. Darkness and light. Two things that exist side by side and don't cancel each other out. Through modern science, we have learned so much more about the universe and about darkness and light than the people of Jesus' time would have ever understood. But as an agrarian society steeped in Jewish law and tradition, they would have understood the natural world and that all her resources belong to God. They would have understood the very nature of light to be an attribute or extension from God, from which all life springs and is sustained. I'm mentioning this because it is to these people and to us today that Jesus makes a pretty bold statement when he proclaimed, I am the light of the world. With all my heart, I believe that there is an energy of light so big and bright that darkness cannot overcome it. And I believe that light is Jesus. Light that is hope for the world. Life that is in all things, of all things, and for all things. So when Jesus later proclaims, you are the light of the world, honestly, <laughs> it makes me feel like I might fall to my knees. To the question, is Jesus the light of the world or are you? The answer is yes, and it is revolutionary. It means that we carry within our very being the ability to reflect Christ's light, God's love, back into the world. Can we just take a minute here? <laughs> We're not passive receivers of the light. We are active participants reflecting the light. You are the light of the world is not just a statement or belief. It's a call to action. It's the difference between knowing about God and being the activity of God in the world. Light does not exist by itself. It only fulfills its purpose when it is poured out for others. Jesus poured himself out for the world, and he invites us to do the same. This makes the black holes where we sometimes find ourselves absolutely sacred because light shines the brightest in darkness. Judy Canato says it this way, we incorporate light into our being and begin to radiate in a way that nourishes those around us with the breath of God. We become compassion and service, wisdom and grace, an inclusive love that flows out of the experience of connection to our essence. Jesus is the light of the world, and so are you two things that are true at the same time. On this third Sunday of Advent, as we walk toward the birth of Christ, 
the birth of light and love that is all-encompassing and inclusive. Walk with purpose. You are filled with the love and light of Christ and called to shine your beautiful, beautiful light into a weary world. Amen. Walk in the light, people of faith, and may the light you shine be a reflection of God's nature, bearing light into dark places with hope that displaces despair and love that casts out hate. Amen. Feed us with light, feed us with mercy, feed us with truth, feed us with grace, feed us with hope, feed us with loving. Feed us with joy, feed us with peace, feed us with light, feed us with mercy, feed us with truth, feed us with grace, feed us with hope, feed us with loving, feed us with joy.